face, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to show you how to make a ridiculously easy, simple and yet delicious fresh tomato soup. Now about a year ago I showed you how to make a tomato soup and this is just a slightly different version. I still absolutely love that recipe but I have been making this recipe so much more now. Um, my husband has a, a little garden outside our you know backyard so he's got tons of tomatoes growing and I actually showed sort of a few steps of how uh, when I was making the soup on my vlog on my second channel which if you don't know I do have a second channel Laura's Topics I'll link it down below we're gonna be starting we're gonna start doing a lot more vlogs we are doing vlogs now so if you want to check them out hop on over there subscribe and give us some love but a lot of people were like show us on Laura in the Kitchen how you make that soup it looks amazing so I thought why not it's really easy requires a handful of ingredients and it's just delicious. What I've got here are some fresh tomatoes, so some just some plum tomatoes. I've got some little baby uh, heirloom tomatoes, little yellow tomatoes. I've got fresh basil, a pinch of sugar, balsamic vinegar, pinch of hot pepper flakes, some fresh oregano, garlic, and shallots. That's it. No cream, no, not nothing, nothing else besides a little bit of stock to thin it out after. Uh, of course, salt, pepper, and olive oil. But anyways, it's easy. I'm going to take, first of all, you want to preheat your oven to 425. I've got a 9 by 13 inch pan here. Now, I know that this is going to look like there's a lot of tomatoes and they should all be, you know, in one layer. I'm not doing that. I'm actually, I chose to use a smaller pan for a reason. Because as much as I do want this to caramelize, and it will, I want them to give out a lot of their own juice and I want that to be some of the liquid that when I blend it, I want that to be some of the liquid that's there. So it just works really, really well. I'm just having my tomatoes. Now these I, um, I bought because, you know, our tomatoes, we just kind of pick a few every single day. And uh, there are some that aren't ripe yet, but I wanted to share this recipe with you. And I went to a farmer's market, and I mean, look how beautiful these tomatoes are. I couldn't pass them up. You can also mix and match, you know, some Roma tomatoes, plum tomatoes, you know, well, you, name it, you name it, whatever you've got that's fresh, in season at its best. All I'm doing with my garlic is just bashing it with my knife, getting rid of the skin and popping it right in there. Because what's going to happen is, see, because we're not roasting it all in a single layer, it's not going to develop a lot of color and burn. It's going to kind of bubble in its own juices. It's still, again, going to caramelize a bit at the top, but those flavors are going to be so sweet and delicious that I'm putting a lot of garlic in there because it is going to be so sweet. So when you do go ahead and puree it, it's just there's absolutely no overpowering of garlic whatsoever. Uh, you of course could leave some out, it's completely up to you. I'm adding some shallots, last time I made this you know, in the vlog I even added some green onion tops because I used the whites for a different recipe. I mean again, it's all going to get pureed anyway, so might as well. I'm just going to take the very first layer off. I'm putting my shallots right in. Adding my hot pepper flakes and dried oregano. Small little pinch of sugar. It's about a teaspoon of sugar. And then just a touch of balsamic vinegar. You know, the sugar and balsamic vinegar, all they're really doing is helping with the whole caramelization. That's really all it's doing and bringing out the sweetness in the tomatoes. Tons of fresh basil, stalks and all. Good amount of extra virgin olive oil because at the end of the day, this is kind of what's going to give you those delicious juices and what those tomatoes are going to roast in. So you want to make sure you add a good maybe quarter cup or so. This is going to make about four to six servings depending on how big your serving is. So about four tablespoons of olive oil is completely enough for four to six people. It's hardly anything. Good amount of salt and pepper good amount of salt because tomatoes are very very sweet. Bring this closer to me and just go in with your hands and mix it all together. This is going to be amazing when you put this into the oven and you let it roast. All right, make sure you get that balsamic and that sugar distributed really well. Oops, okay, I'm going to wash my hands, pop this into the oven 425 for about an hour and a quarter, give it a stir every now and then I'll show you what they look like when they're done, and I'm going to show you the little cheese toasty I'm going to serve this with. Can't have soup without grilled cheese. My version, anyway. 
My tomatoes were in the oven for about an hour and about 10 minutes. And I just want you to look at what I was saying. Because we cooked them in a slightly smaller pan, you get all these incredible juices. Otherwise, the tomatoes would roast, which, you know, they're, it's great. But you wouldn't get them to be kind of soft and their juices to release. It's, it's amazing. Now, for me, a bowl of mozzarella, a piece of bread, I'm good to go. That would be supper all on its own. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my blender. Now, if you don't have a powerful blender, I have been thinking for a long time if I wanted to invest in a powerful, like a good blender, and I'm glad that I did because I use my blend tech constantly. If you don't have a powerful blender, you're going to need to um, sift, not sift, strain the soup. Otherwise, the skins of the tomatoes are going to be left all over. Now, for me, this one, I kind of put it on the, you know, press the soup setting or whatever, and it's just purees smoother than I've ever seen it before. And I don't need to strain it because there's nothing to strain, so it's perfect. But it's completely up to you. I'm just going to try and get it all in here without really making a mess. Oh, good. Awesome. And then I'm just going to turn this on and puree it. Lid on. And off she goes. Boom. I love that I don't have to turn it off either. Because it all on its own. Now, you can, I mean, it's, it's totally smooth. You could serve this as is, nice and thick, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into my saucepan. I'm going to turn this on, not super high, and I'm just going to take some vegetable stock. Now obviously I don't want to get rid of all that, so what I do is I kind of pour my vegetable stock in there, give it a swirl, and then you can just add as much stock as you'd like to make it as thick or as thin as you'd like. I usually add about a cup of vegetable stock. Um, usually seems to be perfect for me. But again, you could serve this as is. You could thin it out if you want to. The world is your pickle, my friend. Might as well. Like a little splash in there. Now what I'm going to serve with this is my little cheese toasty. What I've got here is a couple slices of, these are just whole wheat baguette because that's just what I buy one of my favorites. What I'm going to do is I just cut them in on, on a diagonal, kind of really as large as I could so I can get some nice big pieces. I'm going to turn my little skillet on. I've got an itty bitty little skillet here. Don't turn it on too high, maybe about medium low. Otherwise it'll burn before the cheese get a, gets a chance to melt. Then what I'm going to do, first of all, let's work on the outside. Take a little bit of butter and just kind of smear it on one side of each one because that's going to end up being the outside. That's going to get all nice and brown. And then, I'm going to do this on a plate so it doesn't get all dirty. Take just an itty bitty amount of basil pesto, store bought, homemade, up to you. I just use a tiny little bit on each side, not too much because it can, basil pesto can be a bit overpowering and it's got a lot of oil in there so you don't want your end result to be super oily. Then just a couple slices. This is just a block of mozzarella I had in the fridge. Sandwich this baby together, like so. So it's like a fancy grilled cheese. And then just kind of keep it there until it gets beautifully colored on one side. It's got lovely color. And the cheese is all melted. And that's it. We're going to do that. That's going to happen at the same time. The soup is getting warm and uh, be ready to go. Look at that delicious creaminess. No cream whatsoever. It's just pure, delicious tomato. I'm just, I'm too excited to even eat, to even talk, because I want to eat. I've also got my little toasty ready. That just took a couple of minutes. Oh my goodness. So smooth. So creamy. Oh, let me give you. I'm doing it. Mmm. Mm hmm. So, so. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me, guys. I don't know what to lower in the kitchen to get the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. I'm gonna keep dunking and eating. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.